Hi, everybody. Uh, Chase Urich here with my partner in crime, Cole McCoy. We are here. What's up? In the Trenches, episode 32. Uh, we're going to be bringing you part two from 31, where we discussed how to replace uh, and take care of your client, make sure that they're in the best situation, replacing efficiently, doing it correctly. Now, today, we're going to talk about finding that cash value, finding the opportunity to make sure that, you know, reduced paid up is a good option for your client. And so Cole McCoy and I are going to dive into that today. Uh, and we're going to kick things off with first and foremost, you know, really you got to start off with finding out if there is value in your client's policy or, or the person that could potentially be your client. You want to find out if they have uh, actual value in the policy now, uh, currently. So Cole, share with us how you have that conversation, how you kick it off with them uh, to go into finding out if they have, if they have uh, value in the policy right now. Yeah, absolutely. So typically what this looks like, Chase, is when you have that client that comes to you or when you're knocking on the door, when you're sitting down with them and they say, I already have a really good policy. I'm not looking to change anything. I can't really afford anymore. You say, great. There's actually, th there may be some more benefits in your policy that you don't, you don't realize you can get access to. I'd love to show you how that works. And that's where you have the conversation to to get them to grab their policy, which we've gone over. Um, but this is where you are looking at the values in their policy, especially if they've had something for more than five years. There oftentimes is a lot of extra benefit available to them that they're going to want to know about. And, and honestly, I would say, I would venture to say, Chase, that uh, 80 to 90% of agents don't know this tactic. And that's okay. It's it's, it's, it has nothing to do with your skill level. Maybe it's just a little wrinkle in your game to help you get some more deals. So this is at the point of the conversation where you're not replacing because, you know, they're in a graded or modified situation. You can get them level. You're not replacing because they are in a, a very overpriced product. This is actually, you know, you're going to run into this where it's a really, really good company and it's a great policy and now you just get to help the client accentuate onto those benefits. So this is, I think, huge for um, agents. And maybe this could get you an extra deal a week. So, And I know that, you know, for a new agent, we've, we've been around this for some time now. We talk about our years in the business. But um, it's actually something that has escaped me for almost half of my career. Uh, and I remember talking to Ben about it for the first time, Ben Bowman, uh, for out there, any everybody listening that doesn't know, uh, know Ben, um, this was kind of an eye opener for me because I didn't know where to look, where to find it, how to find it, didn't know anything about it and what the options yeah. are. Um, I've actually spoke with you in a home when we've done third party validation uh, where, you know, how do I find it? Where do I even start? And so that's where I want to kick this off right now, finding the value. But then if you're an agent right now and you've you found yourself in a situation where you can't beat their rate, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, where do I start to find out if there's, there's value in that policy? Absolutely. So let's just assume you've got them to go grab your policy and you're looking at it. I just kind of put something together on my board here, Chase, and these are all um, hypothetical values. This wasn't based on an actual policy. It's just something for a teaching example to show you what to look for. And so what you're going to see typically is a, um, a, 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 you'll see policy values or summary of benefits or something along those lines. And it's typically going to be multiple lines like this, maybe 15 or 20 lines yeah. where you have different items. So what I did on this one, again, completely hypothetical. I, I just wanted to give an example up on the board here. Uh, this is, I started with years six, seven, and eight, just for the sake of time and for the sake of going over this, but you're going to have typically about 15 or 20 columns. The first one usually Chase is going to say death benefit and you'll see the death benefit if it's a whole life policy all the way down the page. And that's how you know where you're in, where you're in the right spot. So when you're sorting through, if you're an agent out there and you, you've never done it before, you don't know where to start, listening to what Cole just said, um, go through those pages and look for these indicators that he's got listed on his board. Um, you're going to see different terminology with different companies, but like he's listed there. Mm -hmm. Uh, cash value, premium, death benefit, those things, you're going to see it in a running chart. As he mentioned, look for those and you'll know you're in the right place. If, if you're one of the agents that works with us, you know, you got a hotline you can call and we can help you yep. out. If you don't have that, look for what Cole's touching on here. It's going to be one, one page with a lengthy amount of information. You're going to see an increasing number on the cash value side of things. Uh, so that's a good point, Cole. I know that uh, 
when we gone over before, that was one of those indicators we wanted to make sure everybody saw. So um, yeah. when, when yep. we notice that, we find the value part of it, where do we go next with the client? Yeah, so this is something that you want to look at and kind of capture. Just you want to kind of get a feel for what you're actually dealing with here. And there's a couple things to look for. The example I'm going over right now is a whole life policy where the death benefit doesn't uh, decrease, the premium doesn't change, it, it builds up cash value, it has you know all these different items within the policy. But a couple things to look out for, you know, as the policy starts getting older, when you get down into 10, 15, 20 years, is the death benefit changing? That's something that you definitely want to ask yourself. Yep. You also want to look at the premium co column and say, is the premium changing? You want to look at the cash value column. Is the cash value going to dwindle? These are, these are all indicators that you could be dealing with a universal life policy, which is a completely different conversation. But at least you know, this is where you want to look for. If you can get to this page, it's pretty much going to tell you everything you need to know. But what I want to do, Chase, if that's okay, and stop me if I'm just rambling and, and skipping over something. I just kind of want to take a, a couple minutes and explain each of these columns, especially as you get further on down with the policy options. So that way, you, you know, here's some tools in the arsenal, what you may be able to deal with and, and how we can go from there. So we're just going to look at this top portion of the board. I kind of laid everything out just for sake of maybe doing a little lesson today. But so obviously this first column, that's the life insurance, death benefit. That's how much insurance the client will get if they die. Pretty simple. Premium. So you see $1,000 here. Premium is typically going to be displayed in an annual premium fashion. So year over year, how much money is the client going to pay for that policy? Pretty simple. Typically, next what happens is you're looking at a cash value column. So what that is, is the amount of cash that they've accumulated um, where that's where you hear from people borrowing from their policies. Maybe they use it to pay their bills or pay their premium. This is something that if they're just getting a little bit out of, they're going to have to pay it back at a massive interest. Um, an opportunity that you may have to put a client in a better situation with the cash value. Um, I've run into this many times where Miss Mary may have a situation. She borrowed $2,000 uh, 10 years ago, and she's been paying the minimum payment on that, on that loan. What you need to do at that point, stop what you're doing and call the company. You want to figure out what that loan is, is up to now because if they're paying minimums, I have seen a $2,500 loan, and I'm not going to name companies, but after about 12 years, that $2,500 loan turned into a little over $10,000. That interest so, is a killer. Yeah. So that's something to look out for. Ask them if they've taken out loans against their policy. But this, um, briefly, what this can go over on the cash value side of things, if they have a UL policy, sometimes this value will be huge and then it'll start dwindling. And that's something that you may have a, a, an opportunity to do something called single premium whole life. Um, briefly, I'll go over that one. Basically, you're doing using a tax form called a 1035 exchange, rolling that over into a different vehicle, get, using your cash value to buy a, a single pay a whole life policy. Uh, that can be useful for that. We won't get into that one today, um, but that this is kind of where you would figure out that value. And before we jump um, on that, yeah, um, talking about single premium, if you ever find yourself in a situation, make sure that your mentor is accessible to help you with absolutely, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before you open up and say anything mm -hmm. to a client, you want to make sure you know the minimums that the carriers that offer single premium. Yes. With, yep. You want to know those media, media, uh, minimums, I'm sorry, before you say anything to a client. Uh, you You're typically looking about 10 grand is what you need minimum. Yeah. yeah so, go absolutely. ahead. Sorry, I just want to throw that out there. No, nope, no, nope, that's very helpful. Like I said, please stop me because I'm sure I'll skip over something. Um, the next value, you'll see it a few different ways. You might see paid up value. You might say reduce, see reduced paid up value. All this means right here is that if the client stopped paying for their policy, policy to say, I want the paid up provision within my policy, the insurance company is taking their cash value, doing a single premium in-house using their cash value to buy a paid up policy. So this example, these are completely hypothetical numbers. I just kind of, hey, this, this would be good for an example. This $4,455 cash value will buy a paid up policy for $7,500. What that means is that $7,500 of what I like to call loss proof insurance. 
or, uh, but it's just a policy. They have now have insurance. It's paid for. They don't do anything for it. It's $7,500 worth of insurance. And that's, that's what we're going to focus a lot on is this part today. Um, but we'll continue on for now. Um, the last benefit that you'll usually see within a policy is something called extended term. What extended term means is if I stop paying my premiums today, how much time do I have before my policy expires? Um, so what that means is if they're taking the extended term provision, um, if I stop paying premiums, I have five in this uh, example, I have five years and 80 days where I don't have to pay anything for me to still have a $25,000 death benefit. At the end of that term, it's just like a term policy, it terminates. So in this scenario, um, I don't use extended term very often. There's a few companies that will, you know, if the client's 75 or 80, sometimes their extended term, if they had a policy for a while, is a very, very long time, maybe tw another 20 years. That's a scenario where that may be a good fit, but typically I, I leave extended term out of the equation. I, I don't feel like it's genuinely in the best interest of the client most of the time. So that's kind of an overview of these values. Is there anything I need to hit on other than this right here, Chase? No, one, a couple of things. Number one, you explained it perfectly. Paid ups. Any other terminology, any other wording that's used uh, for an agent to look at, possibly uh, when they grab a policy that they may see instead of paid up, any other terminology they may see in a, in a, in a policy? Uh, well, the only thing I can think of, Chase, on this one is this, this value uh, sometimes isn't on the policy. Gotcha. And so you have to call the company and get that value. And companies have no problem with you doing a paid out policy because really they've minimized their risk from $25,000 down to this amount here. So they're, right. they're a lot of times pretty eager for that. Uh, and then last, it, so. last but not least, um, you <laughs> on the, on the left side, right behind you, it says year six, seven, and eight. For yes. It's not. Yeah, right now, yeah. That's typically when we start to see these values yep. come into play, right? Absolutely. This is kind of the sweet spot in, Again, some of these numbers may be a little exaggerated. I just kind of threw something up on the board as a teaching example. But, yes, that's typically the sweet spot where you're going to start seeing ability to put folks in a, in a you know, get them extra benefits, I guess is the best way to put it. So Perfect. So these, yeah. are, these are terms, and in, 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 in it's part of our vernacular on a daily basis being, a, being in the business. How do you explain the reduced paid up to a client who knows nothing about our business they don't know much about anything. How do you break it down and simplify it for them to understand? Yeah, and this is tricky. I'm still evolving this tactic because sometimes you can still lose people if you make this too complicated. But what I like to do, first of all, is make sure they don't have any loan against the policy because all these numbers change if there is. Assuming they have no loans, they left the policy alone, I always tell them, I say, look, Miss Mary, assuming that your health is, is still the same as it was five years ago, and there may, may have been a couple changes, but that shouldn't affect you if it's nothing major, no heart attacks or strokes or cancer, right? Okay. Um, what, what there may be available for you is to have insurance that is loss proof, meaning if you stop paying, if you, uh, take your, if, if you get sick and forget to make payments, no matter what happens, you have insurance that's yours, it's paid up, you don't have to worry about it. Um, loss proof insurance can be very important, especially in your last moments if, if you're not able to pay your premiums or if you just don't wanna pay a premium anymore and you decide, hey, I don't need 25,000, I have, I have loss proof insurance that's paid up already. This could be a situation where you're good to go, you're paid up. But what most people like to know about Miss Mary is even with loss proof insurance, one, am I able to lower my bill for the same amount of insurance? And two, could I get more insurance for the amount of money I'm paying with the provisions within the policy? And so what I'm going to do for you today, Miss Mary, I'm going to review your options and see exactly what may be available for you to either lower your bill or you've been paying this $83 a month we may be able to get you some more coverage where you don't have to pay anymore and you can leave an extra five or $6,000 to your family. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? And so that's kind of how I phrase that. I, I try to get their buy-in at many points because I don't want to lose them. They see all these numbers, it can get confusing. But the, the number one thing that you want to hit on is this right here, loss-proof insurance. So when they hear that, 
and see that it, it makes it a little easier. Like, Oh my gosh. So this is an insurance that no matter what happens, if I, if I decide I don't want this policy anymore for, or if something happens and I'm not able to make the premiums anymore or, or whatever, I still have something in place for my family. And so I hit down hard on this and I said, look, Miss Mary, if I can get you loss proof insurance, is that something that you would be interested in? If you explain it well, nine times out of 10, they will say yes. Now it's very important. You don't just jump into this. You still want to build rapport. You still want to spend time with your client because if they don't trust you, you're going to hear something like this. Now nah, I'm just going to leave things like they are. What they're saying is they don't trust you to look into it enough for them to actually do something for them. So you still want to take that time within your rapport phase, within just interacting with them, letting them know you're a real person. You're not just trying to get one over on them. Um, that goes a very long way. So you, you did a really good job explaining it to them, keeping it simple. You've done a good job also of just not confusing the person. When you present it in a simple way, where do you go as you lead into it? You're going into the conversation. How do you proceed after that simplification of the explanation? How do you proceed into the actual process of moving forward with them? Yes. So what I'm going to do is determine what this number is here, the paid up number. And so um, let's assume that Miss Mary still wants $25,000 in insurance. If she has $7,500 worth of paid up insurance and we were to take this provision, she now has $7,500 of insurance that she doesn't pay anything for. Well, in this example, she's paying $1,000 a year or $83.33 for a policy. I now have $83.33 to see how much coverage we can get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go look through my companies based on her health and see who's going to be a good fit. And I'm going to see, first of all, how much coverage $83 is going to get her. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a quote for the remaining balance. So after um, taking off $7,500 of loss proof for paid up insurance, I only need to find $17,500 $17, more um, of, of insurance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it all out in options for her. And at this point, I'm, I'm not really telling her that I'm going with a different company just yet. I want her to pick the plan that she wants before I say, hey, this is going to be potentially with a different company. I want to break that news to her once she actually sees the benefit and what it's going to do for her family. So at this point, I'm still capturing her beneficiaries. I'm still making sure she has a bank account. I'm still making sure she can qualify with her health. But I'm just kind of gathering it like I was writing a new policy. I'm doing the discounts. I'm, I'm just making sure that all our ducks are in a row because I don't want to get to one, get to an option point. And then all of a sudden, there's a wrench thrown in. I want this to feel as smooth as possible for the client because if, if indeed it's easy, it's an easy user experience for Miss Mary, um, it's going to turn into a sale and uh, she's going to be very thankful. Well, at this part, this is where the question is going to come in from those out there viewing. I'm sure they, they, they will have the question. I'll throw it out there. Like there's times where I know for a fact that you were not able to make it match and make it work. So you walk, uh, of course, let them know that they've got a great deal. They're yep. in great shape. How often do you find yourself in a situation when you're running an analysis on a policy like this? that you're actually able to do better for the client. And do you know off the top of your head any type of percentage? Um, if I'm running into a person that's had a policy for more than five years and they send a card back because I'm running direct mail leads, um, I would say if they've had a policy for a little while, half of the time I'm yeah. able to, to do something like this. And seeing these values and determining if I can put them in a better spot takes a couple minutes. I took a shot. They weren't really buyers otherwise. And if I can't help them, I'm on to the next person. But in this scenario, you know, this is something where you're kind of sitting on a gold mine, not only for your business, but for the client as well. I mean, you're, yes. put, you're putting money in their pocket in one way or another. And uh, it, it can be wonderful. I mean, who's going to say no to, to loss proof insurance and, and extra coverage or lowering their bill and it doesn't change what they have, you know? So, it's all about still following your process, still making sure that you're doing everything you do correctly. You don't want to rush into something. You don't want to um, kind of get that commission breath because you know you can help them. You want to ease them through the process because at the end of the day, 
in this example, they've already had a policy for five years. They've paid it 60 months. They've made this premium payment. They're comfortable with it. This is something that they're used to. Any idea of change, um, they're immediately going to push back. So you have to kind of sell the destination first. And then once you have, have them make a decision, now you get them, you sell them the trip. But it's all up to how you do it and how you're helping people and how you're explaining it and how you're walking them through the process that gets them to that point to where they're comfortable with it. Now, you made a, mo you made a comment a moment ago, and it, I've seen you do this. It is literally as simple as pulling your phone out. Uh, when you say it takes just a couple of minutes to be able to, to find out the situation, mm -hmm. if it's good for them, you're literally able to pull your phone out, you're running a quote, you've got the values, and you're matching it up to see if it's going to be the best fit for them. Mm -hmm. it is that Absolutely. Yep, it is. Okay. So yep. what's next in the equation here as we proceed? You've <clears throat> gone through a lot of the rapport building. You've gone through the homework. You found out what's in the policy. You're starting to match and see if it makes, makes sense to them. You've explained to them in simplistic terms um, how this is going to work and why it's beneficial. Where do we go uh, in terms of the close on this? Uh, I, do, I typically do a traditional three-option close, and I'm not talking about companies yet at this point. I'm simply just putting the numbers in front of them and hoping that this person is re if I've gotten this far in the presentation, that person is generally reasonable enough to see how this is beneficial for them. So what I do, I just lay out three options. The first option I say, you know, I don't tell them this is what you currently have. I just lay them out. So option one is what we've laid out in their policy, what they already have $25,000 with the death benefit. Premium is $83 and 33 cents a month. Option two. So this is where I ran the quote for 17,500. They have that other $7,500 in paid up insurance. So they still are going to have um, $25,000 of coverage, but now instead of paying $83, they're paying $71 a month. Same. And then I show them, and then I show them option three for $83 and 30 cents a month you are now able to get, now this, again, these numbers are made up. I don't know if this is realistic or not, maybe a little bit less, but $31,450 worth of coverage. Um, and then I look, I just step back and I hand them the paper and I say, Miss Mary, which one makes the most sense for you? Do you want to lower your bill? Do you want to add on to your coverage at no cost to you? Or do you want to keep things the same? Or ideally, I've, I've done a good enough job where I'm laying in front of them and just shutting up. That's, I, I do it one or one of those two ways. And most of the time I'll be transparent. They're going to pick option three because they're used to that premium payment. They've budgeted it out. They've done all the work. Um, and their family's going to get an extra $6,450 worth of coverage. Um, so it's a, a typical three option close at that point, but in an ideal world, um, you know, and I'm not saying I do this perfectly all the time, but I'm shutting up and just letting them pick and hopefully their brains will say, oh, that's a better deal. Let's go with that one. And most of the time they're probably choosing option two or three, right? Yes. Yeah. Very rarely are they going to do this one. And if they're picking option one, they literally don't understand or they don't trust you. And it's usually because they don't trust you. Yeah. I got you. Yep. Awesome. Any missing ingredients to this? Because you've covered it perfectly, and I know that there's a lot of other intricacies that we could go into. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're an agent out there right now and you've done one of these before, first things first, start at the beginning, like Cole said. Get mm -hmm. in the policy and jump into the values. Try and find where, you know, where is the cash value, where is the paid up, where is the extended term options. Um, make sure you, you find that first. And then as you mentioned, Cole, you want to be able to kind of shop it, see what the quotes are, what you're able to do, uh, and then explain it in simplistic terms with your clients. Uh, this is a big deal to them, man. You're, you're putting them in a much better situation when it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So a couple tips um, that I would, I would use, especially to pick option two or option three, you've already hopefully got the name of their beneficiaries. You've already hopefully sold them the destination of here's what's going to happen. This is kind of where you have to break the news to them. And you never want to say it like, like any, in any negative light. You want to say, it, awesome. So, Miss Mary, I'm, I'm glad you picked option three. So, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to call your current insurance company. Well, actually, that's how I'm explaining it. But 
here's kind of, I just kind of give them the trip now. So we're going to call your insurance company and we're going to make sure that you have $7,500 of paid up insurance. That now leaves us uh, in this scenario, 20, $23,950 that we're applying for with another company. What I'm actually doing is I'm applying first before I change anything on her policy to make sure they can get approved. And if you're using a company that has an instant decision, ideally EAP, um, it makes your life a lot easier. Royal Neighbors, American Amicable Prosperity is kind of my main three per personally. Uh, you might have a different lineup of carriers. That's totally fine. Um, but I'm just seeing, I make sure I can get them approved first. Once I'm approved, I got a writing or I got a policy number. Then we handle all this other stuff. And so, but what I, what I tell is that, Hey, so we're, we're going to actually apply and get you that extra coverage for that $83 and 33 cents. Now I'm selling the company. They've already picked it. It's very hard for them to back out. This is Royal Neighbors of America. They've been around since 1895. They're the first insurance company to offer policy to women, blah, 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 blah. All the stuff about company that you're excited about. And that's a good fit for the customer. Um, now we're just going to go, we're going to go and get you approved. Go ahead and grab your ID for me. We'll get this knocked out and make sure that the, all this is still possible. We still have, we still have to get you to the underwriting process. I'm not hundred percent sure that you're going to get approved. I'm pretty sure, but let's fight for you real quick and see what we can do. Usually they're going to go get their stuff. If they've already picked a plan, they kind of have an idea what's going on at this point as far as switching things over. Now you're spilling the beans. You're really excited about the company. You know, you're congratulating them on making a wonderful decision. This extra money, you know, will help cover inflation. This will help give your family a little bit of extra money. Um, when that time does come, congrats, like, we're, we're proud of you. Thank you for um, trusting us to, to help your family in a time of need. Um, write the app, get all that done, get a policy number. Here's their folder. Boom. Now you know 100% you got somebody approved. You're calling their current insurance company. And, and you can call them and say, hey, I'm sitting here with Miss Mary, and she wants to take the paid-up provision within her policy. I wanted to see if you could actually email me the forms to fill out, and I'll fax it off. So that way, um, there's no premium being taken out for this policy next month. We want it to be paid up. Most of these companies uh, will – they, they, they all have a little bit of, uh, of a different procedure. Some will mail the client something to where they have to sign it in the back. Some will fax it to you right then and there. You can help them fill it out and um, help them take care of that. Do the admin work on it. You don't want this to be extra work for the client. You want to be handling this as best as possible. Um, but also in that conversation, even if that process to get the paid up insurance might take a week or two, you always want to make sure that the company is taking their policy off of bank draft because if something were to happen, um, you know, let's say something changed drastically in their health the next day and they completely forgot and changed or, you know, you just never know, right? You always want to make sure that there's still something in place officially currently in that moment. So you're not canceling a policy over the phone. You're, you're not doing anything other than taking it off of the bank draft and having them send you the forms to get the paid up policy. I hope that makes sense. I know, I hope it's not getting convoluted. No, it's perfect. But, it makes total sense. And this is kind of my mindset. I, I'm not um, divulging like every tiny little detail to to the customer. I want them to think I've done this a hundred times and this is kind of what everybody's doing. And because at the end of the day, you're putting somebody in a better position okay. and you have, you have to sell that destination first. Um, I think that about covers it. Um, oh, so they'll send you forms to your email or they'll mail them something have them take it off a bank draft for the time being so they're not getting double drafted and keep in touch with your client. Sometimes these are follow-ups. Go follow up with them. Don't leave them hanging. Call them a week or two later and, and hey, did you get this? Did you get your policy? Did you get your paid up forms? Is there anything you need for me? Again, appreciate you. Thanks for trusting me to do this with you. And once that happens, that premium comes out, that client's stuck. They're, they've already been paying on a policy for five years. They're not going anywhere. So these, these are typically, Chase, um, we didn't really talk about this, but some of the stickiest deals that you'll get because they've been paying this premium for five years. And when or you more. say stuck, you, knowing you, I know what you mean by that. It's not stuck in a bad way if you're out there. Stuck as in it's not going to lead. Yeah, they're not going to Correct. Lead. Yeah. Stuck as in they're in a great situation now. <laughs> yeah, I wanted yeah. to specify that. Um, it's a good thing. That piece of business is sticky because, mm -hmm. as you mentioned before, they've already been paying for it for five years and, and they're happy campers. So I think you broke it down perfectly. 
And just a recap for everybody out there, you know, make sure you have really good rapport built with your client. Uh, at, on the last episode, on episode 31, uh, we talked about making sure that you're always keeping in mind objective number one is to be doing what's best for your client. And so as long as we're keeping that in mind, we're not cutting corners, uh, we're not doing things we shouldn't be doing, we're doing what's best for them. And that'll lead you down the path of success with this, uh, where you find out what's best for them here. You, know, you build that rapport, you, you make sure that you're, you're explaining to them uh, that why this is valuable, because you've already found the value in the policy. So explain to them why it's, why it's valuable, why you recommend going this route, and explain it in simplistic terms as Cole broke down for you guys. You're showing them, uh, you're using the two words loss proof, which Cole mentioned just a moment ago, which I think is very important. Uh, that was, those are two very important words. And just lead them down that path with facts uh, and showing them that you're, 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 you're passionate about why this is important uh, and why this is an added value for them. So I thought you explained it perfectly, Cole. I appreciate that, Chase. Uh, maybe we'll do another take and I'll get it, get it better. Or we, get, we just get Chris Smith on here to do it. That would be yeah. better. Chris Smith, I know he'll be listening to this episode. I love the shout out. But we love you, dude. You guys coming up next. Uh, this next episode, episode 33, is going to be a fun one. We are very, very excited about it. So, Cole, as always, I appreciate you doing this with me, and uh, we'll rock and roll next episode. Yeah, man. Have a good day. All right. If you guys have not yet hit that subscribe button, do so. We've got some really good content coming to you. Obviously, the in the trenches that Cole and I are doing here, and then also Chris Smith and I rock and roll with. Uh, the Closer's Corner. Lots of really neat stuff, and we'd love to get you connected. All you got to do is hit that little bell uh, up over here. I think it's on this side or this side, whichever side. Uh, hit the bell, get subscription, uh, subscribe, whatever, uh, and we'll get you plugged in, and we appreciate you guys, and we'll do it all over again next time. See you guys.